Now let's start our second video on the demand and supply model. And here we're going to look at changes in the overall level of demand. So remember again, the shape of the demand curve allows us to look at how a price change influences the quantity demanded. But of course, lots of things besides the price of a good influence the amount that customers want to buy. So what if some other determinant of demand besides the price changes? For a specific example here, let's suppose that hot weather means customers want to buy two more ice cream cones at every price. Well, we're going to go ahead and draw a whole new demand curve based on that new information. And what we're going to see here is that this higher overall level of demand is going to have a demand curve that is to the right of our old demand curve. So you can see on this slide that I've got the price of ice cream cones here as before, and I have a new quantity of ice cream cones demanded. And at each price, we have two additional ice cream cones demanded due to the hot weather. And when we graph that data, you can see that here is our old demand curve, and our new demand curve is to the right, because at every price, there's two more. There used to be zero demanded at a price of three, now there's two. There used to be two demanded at a price of 250, now there's four, and so on down the line. So again, if there's an increase in the overall level of demand, if there's more demanded at every price, then we shift the demand curve to the right. Also remember, and I'm going to just have to keep on repeating this, is that if we have an increase in the amount people want to buy due to a change in price, then we don't shift the demand curve. We simply moved, say, from $2 to 150 and we move down and to the right along the demand curve. So what if there's a decrease in the overall level of demand? So suppose a new tastier version of Frogurt is invented, frozen yogurt, and people want to buy six fewer ice cream cones at every price than they did on the previous slide. Then again, we're going to shift to a whole new demand curve. And this is a decrease in the overall level of demand, with less demand at every price. And so we're going to shift the whole demand curve to the left. So our D2 was our demand curve with hot weather. And we're going to go ahead and shift this to the left because our new quantity demanded is six less at every price. And if you look at all this, you can see, well, there used to be eight demanded at a price of 150. Now there's six less than that. So we have two demanded at a price of 150. There used to be 10 demanded at a price of $1. Now there's going to be six less than that or four demanded at a price of $1. So again, a decrease in the overall level of demand that isn't caused by a change in the goods price causes the demand curve to shift left to a whole new demand curve. So what else besides price influences demand? And remember, a change in price causes a movement along the demand curve. So what are the variables that shift the overall demand curve? There's income, price of related goods, tastes, expectations about the future, and the number of buyers. Let's think about income first. Most goods are what we call a normal good. So for most goods, when people have a higher income, they want to buy more, and we shift the demand curve to the right. But there are some goods that are what we call inferior. So for some goods, when people have higher incomes, they actually want to buy less. And so the stereotypical examples here might be raw rice and beans that, you know, as you get a higher income, you start buying other foods or spam or ramen noodles or, you know, a really high mileage used car. Because when you get a higher income, you essentially turn towards higher quality versions of the good that meet the same need. And notice then, goods are often normal at low income levels. 
as your income goes from $10,000 a year to $20,000 a year, your likelihood of buying a used car might go up. But as your income goes from forty dollars to $50,000 a year, your likelihood of buying a used car might actually go down. So often what happens is that there's a kind of progression for consumers that they outgrow the good and it becomes inferior at that point. Goods can be related to each other. And there's two main ways goods can be related to each other. They could be substitutes, where they are different ways of serving the same need, or they might be complements. And that one's a little bit less obvious what it means. Complementary goods are goods that complete each other. They make a set, or they tend to be used together. So when we think about substitutes, let's suppose we think about apples and bananas. An increase in the price of apples leads to an increase in the demand for bananas because people buy fewer apples and more bananas. So we would shift the demand curve for bananas to the right. When we think about complements, we might think about something like gasoline and tires. If there's an increase in the price of gasoline, that leads to a decrease in the demand for tires because people drive less when there's higher gas prices and they don't wear out their tires as quickly. For each of these, if the price change goes in the other direction, the demand shift also goes in the other direction. So a decrease in the price of A leads to a decrease in the demand for B if they're substitutes. And if we're talking about complements, a decrease in the price of X leads to an increase in the price in the demand for Y. There are other things out there that can influence the overall level of demand and cause the demand curve to shift. Sometimes things just become fashionable or trendy or people develop a taste for them and that's going to cause the demand, sh demand curve to shift left if they become less fashionable or to the right if they become more fashionable. Expectations about the future. People will tend to look forward and buy or not buy goods based on their expectation of the future. In particular, if people expect prices to be lower in the future, they'll often delay their purchases until they can take advantage of that lower price. If they expect prices to be higher in the future, they'll buy now so that they won't have to pay the higher price in the future. This effect can be strong when assets are very storable. This effect doesn't tend to happen very much when the asset can't be stored because it's perishable or because it's an intangible like a service. Also, we can think about the way in which expectations of future income impact current demand. And what we tend to notice is that when people expect their future income to be higher, they sort of start spending some of that expected future income now. Or if people are uncertain about their future income, they might be more cautious in their spending now. This sort of thing tends to be most important when you're looking at goods that are financed over time, because those are the situations where you really worry about, am I gonna be able to make my car or house payment next year if I lose my job? Or yeah, you know, I can afford to buy a somewhat more expensive house than I'm really comfortable with, because I expect to get that big raise next year. Last and fairly obviously, if you have an increase in the number of buyers, that increases total demand in the market. There are a couple example questions here for you, and you can go ahead and pause the video and take a look at those. And that is the end of our segment.